This is an ordinary stick of DDR2 memory. Nothing special about this. This is also a stick of memory. But it's one gigabyte of Intel Turbo memory. These two chips work completely differently from each other. And Intel Turbo RAM ended up being a massive flop that cost Intel a lot of money, and they ended up having to shut it down. Most ordinary computer RAM, such as the stick of DDR2, uses dynamic RAM, or DRAM, which stores data in capacitors, which has to be consistently refreshed. It's also considered volatile RAM, which means that if you remove the power, it deletes all the data. Whereas this original stick of Intel Turbo memory, which was originally available in 2007 on the Intel Santa Rosa platform, uses non-volatile flash memory, which is not random access like RAM is because it requires a serial bus. So that means that Intel Turbo memory is not RAM. Back in 2007, when this laptop came out, most computers used mechanical hard drives. The idea of Intel Turbo memory is that you could have frequently used programs stored on it and it would allow for a faster boot time and a faster access for programs. To test it, I first ran it without the Turbo RAM installed. Then I was able to download the driver from the Dell website and I installed it on the system. I also went to the Turbo Boost panel and made sure that Ready Boost was enabled. Now I'll have both videos running side by side to see which one runs better and or faster. So it's slower. Why would that be? Was it just a fluke? Did I do something wrong? Well, I'm not the only one to have this issue. In fact, there were several other people who tested this back in 2007. And they got very similar results to what I got. A slower boot time and worse performance overall. One tech reviewer was sent a laptop to test with Intel Turbo RAM installed. And they also saw no improvements to boot times. When Intel tested the same laptop, they said they, they also had no improvements to boot times. So Intel ended up placing the blame on the manufacturer of the laptop that they sent out. No matter what they tried, they just couldn't get it to work on that computer, even though it was supposed to be compatible. But still, it made Intel look bad because their product just didn't do what it was advertised to do. Or at least not for everyone. Some people did have decent luck with Intel Turbo memory, while others did not. And it ended up not mattering too much because when solid state drives started coming out, that ended up solving the issue entirely and even back then when there were slow hard drives, Windows was a lot less bloated, so it was still decent and tolerable to use. There was also another benefit of turbo memory, and that was that while the turbo memory was being used, it could turn off the hard drive and just use the turbo memory as storage, sort of like an SSD. And the Intel Turbo RAM module had a much lower power consumption compared to a hard drive. However, they found that it only has better battery life when you're using only one application. When you're doing a bunch of multitasking, it gets about the same battery life. This is probably because it has to keep switching between different files that are being used on the computer. Whereas if you're just doing one task, you're using the same file over and over again. Intel Turbo Memory ended up sticking around for a little while longer and was even going to have a newer version called Project Braidwood, which was announced in 2009, and was supposed to be released with the Intel i-series CPUs that were coming out in 2010. However, Project Braidwood ended up being scrapped, and Intel Turbo Memory was no more. If you liked this video, consider leaving a like, and check out some of my other content and see if there's something else that you like. Bye-bye now.